congratulations to everyone in here for getting to be in this video. Hey, yo, welcome everyone to episode 56 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and I just want to thank everyone that's been checking us out, liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, just hit that red button right down in the corner. Actually, I think it's that corner. Um, it means a lot to us, and it helps us grow. Uh, so this week, we're going to bring back someone again. Actually, we've been bringing back a lot of guests because things have changed in the last year. I mean, we've talked to a lot of people when everything was locked down, and now it's not. So let's kind of revisit this arcade which i actually have visited recently which was awesome they went through a total renovation moved locations and everything um so this week we're talking to mitchell torino the owner of io bar or arcade bar in madison wisconsin how you doing today mitchell doing good how are you i'm good i'm good i'm glad that we were able to get you back on here i know uh when you first opened up it was just a madhouse in there like it was just yeah. super crazy so you've been open for a little while now mm -hmm. um and i just kind of want to jump right in just go kind of cover some of the stuff we talked about in the last interview since we have new people listening and we're doing video now so it's always nice mm -hmm. to see the owner of the creator's face while they're talking um so just tell me about yourself who is mitchell torino tell me kind of who you were before io what you were doing <laughs> and how you moved out of what you were doing oh if i can remember life before um, my name is Mitchell Torino. I'm 30 years old and I'm the owner of IO Arcade Bar. Uh, I grew up here in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, went to school here, uh, ultimately got a degree in communications, was a marketing manager for a while, hated it, went back into bartending and uh, after a while decided I wanted to be my own boss and start at my own bar. And it, uh, Madison didn't have an arcade bar at the time and it seemed like the niche that needed to be filled so i've been gaming since i was since you know a tiny little kid and i'm still doing it a lot today and i thought that was a great combination of things so threw it all together and io came out yeah i mean you basically took something you enjoyed a passion and turned it into a source of income so you can live off that it's living off your passion which everybody wants to do that so it yeah. seems like you did it right my, my parents are always saying, like, what good are you ever going to get from playing all these video games? You know, go out and do something. Go out and learn something. And now, you know, now take that, business. mom and dad. <laughs> yeah. You definitely showed them. Um, so let's talk about, um, I remember the last time we spoke, you said you, you were in the service industry for a really long time. And then you worked that office job, which you absolutely hated. Mm -hmm. um, I always kind of a joke. Um, it was just like <laughs> something you and your friends were talking about. And then you did it. So walk us through the process of going from that office job to starting the arcade. Like what did, what did it take and kind of what suggestions would you give other people that want to follow a similar route, maybe in a different city? Yeah. So, um, I was working nine to five, didn't like how rigid it was. I had worked in food service since I was about 15. I think I got that office job when I was like 22, 23, something like that. And you know, when you're sitting at a desk, 40 hours a week, you know, and just hating it the whole time. You're thinking about everything you'd rather be doing. And, you know, it, it's uh, something that seems to happen to a lot of people where they say, this is stupid. I, I, I want to be at the bar. I want to go hang out at the bar with my friends. I want to start a bar. I'm going to open my own, invite all my friends and have a, have a good time. And this is stupid. And, I went down to a, a Dota tournament in Columbus, Ohio. I went to MLG Columbus and met some people there and was talking to them. I was just like, what's there to do in Columbus? They said, oh, dude, you got to come to this place. And it was a place, I, I think it was called 16-bit arcade. It might have been 8-bit. And it's one of the bits. I think and it's 16. 16, yeah. And it was awesome. It was like this combination of you know the bar of for my grown-up self and the arcade for the kid that's still inside of me coming together and i went this is the coolest thing and went there and just like played nfl blitz for three hours and had a bunch of cocktails and had a great time came back and i was just telling everyone about it and people were like oh i've seen something like that in chicago i've seen something like that in in like the twin cities madison should have one of those why doesn't it? And, you know, I had the food service experience. Uh, 
my dad is a, a business owner. He runs his own chiropractic clinic in town. And so I had always grown up with this, this kind of spirit of uh, freedom and entrepreneurship. And I went, you know, maybe I should start looking into it. It sounds like there's a niche. It sounds like there's people that want it. And, you know, I've got some of the know-how and I've got some time to figure out the rest. And then I would be working, I was working at two different bars, uh, bartending there. And then in my free time, I would go home and like go on uh, like LoopNet and other like commercial real estate sites and find floor plans and go, how would I build this into an arcade? And started, I, I bought my first arcade game probably four years before I opened and kind of took it apart and put it back together and was just taking all my free time and really digging into it. And eventually you just get to a point where you say, I'm as ready as I'm going to get without actually doing it. And then you just start looking around, talking to banks, talking to, you know, small business centers, stuff like that. And ultimately wound up getting a loan and finding a space and just starting to put in the work is really all it came down to. Yeah. And I, I'm glad I was actually able to make it to your first location before you guys moved. And I remember it was significantly smaller than the new location, which, mm -hmm. which is really cool to like see that growth over time. You'd walk in and there was like an aisle on the right, like killer queen was right by the window and you'd like walk around basically. And you would do a full circle back to the door and there were games on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, and then like a little bar in the back. We were only there for a minute, but I, I remember it so vividly because it was it was really cool. I've only seen a couple arcade bars at this point in time. Um, walk us through kind of what that first location was like and what you learned there. Like the things that, that worked out and the things that didn't work out that you took into this new location. You were like, I'm not going to make this mistake again. Yeah. Our first location, um, it's... So Mass, Wisconsin is built on isthmus. It's a real narrow strip of land. And there's like a, a very dense downtown. And as soon as you leave that, things really like level out. And we were right on the outside of downtown. So like all, all the parking and everything was, you know, in the center of the isthmus. And we didn't really get much of that. And a lot of, you know, we were the only kind of specifically bar for a couple of blocks. And it was a 3,200 square foot space, which sounds like a lot until you fill it with, you know, 50 cardboard or uh, <laughs> plywood boxes that are basically the size of refrigerators. Big ass arcades take up space. <laughs> yeah. You cram 150 people in there and you have to have room for the bar. You have to have bathrooms. You have to have, you know, storage, all that stuff. And very quickly, it got pretty cramped. Um, yeah, I I think at the last space, our our final tally was twelve pinball machines and fifty arcade games. And um, yeah, we just learned that you you need the space. It's really easy when you're looking at uh, like commercial real estate. Everything is priced by the square foot. And so you don't want to pay for more than you need, but it's basically, um, you, you need to account for that. Um, we wound up stashing storage in weird places. We always were joking around like, oh, I guess we just have to take this and just shove it into Galaga and we'll get it out later. Like, um, and then let's see, I'm losing my train of thought. Sorry, I just got a phone call. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, we, we learned that space is a necessity. We learned that uh, knowing your neighbors is very important because we didn't really expect it to take off the way it did. And then you get 150 people in a building and apparently it was, it was a little noticeable. Um, I learned a lot about bar setup. We had kind of you know, I had set up what I thought I would like in a bar and that's different from what, you know, everyone has a different preference when you're back there. 
And so moving into the new space, it was a much more collaborative process of, um, you know, talking to multiple employees and other bartenders at other places and saying what works, what doesn't. I did that a little bit, but I was kind of designing everything myself and it, it wasn't as smooth as it could have been. Um, ultimately, I think the biggest takeaway was just like, there, there's no harm and there's no shame in kind of doing the bootstrapping and getting people together and taking the best of everything, kind of averaging everything out instead of trying to get everything exactly how you think it should be. Because there were definitely some decisions I, I disagreed with at the new place. But once we tried it in practice, you know, it made a ton more sense. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's something you had more of this time around. I mean, with the first place, you kind of did everything on your own. You figured it out. You put it together. And then you were like, OK, let's bring some people in. Like, let's hire some people. Let's let's make this work. But this time, you already had somewhat of a team around you to help mm -hmm. get everything moving. Um, so now on to the move. Obviously, you went from mm -hmm. this old location. You moved to the new location. Uh, we're going to talk about the arcade before we talk about the games that are in the arcade. Um, but what did you have to do in the no new location and how did you prioritize the build out? Cause I remember last time you spoke about how your first location was like a gray box. Basically it had nothing. You had to do everything yeah. from scratch. Completely blank. Um, was this the same kind of idea where you had to like do everything or did you have a little bit there? And then how did you prioritize what to work on first? Yeah, this was kind of the opposite. So the, the new space we're in is two blocks from our old location. Uh, we did not go far. But it used to be one of the biggest gay dance clubs in the Midwest. It's called Plan B. Um, and when they closed, you know, I, I had been in there with friends and it's huge. It, uh, it's more than twice the old space. It's 6,500 square feet as opposed to the 3,200 at the last place. But it was already built out. They already had bathrooms. They already had offices, there was a kitchen, there was already a bar in place. Um, and so at the last place, it was, you know, how do I want it to look? I can do, I can set up everything exactly how I want it. And this time it was kind of, how can we tweak this to make it work better for us? Because we, especially, you know, going into, we moved during the pandemic and we hadn't made money in six months before we moved. Um, we just or nine months even. And so we didn't have money to move stuff around. We couldn't transpose the entire bar, you know, 10 feet that way because we couldn't afford to change all the plumbing and all the electrical. And so we just took what was there. Uh, in some cases we decorated, in some cases we renovated, in some cases we flat out removed a lot of stuff. There were like, DJ booths and like go-go dancing platforms that we had to get rid of because, you know, as dope as that sounds, uh, we needed room for more, <laughs> more video games. Um, and so this was a completely different beast going into it. I think in the six month build out, we probably spent about four months cleaning and two months actually doing construction and making changes that we wanted. But you're, you know, it, I think plan B was open for about 10 years and that means that it was just 10 years of built up spilled drinks and sugar and grime that gets into every little corner and stains the floors and all this stuff. And it was, it was a huge process. We had um, a couple of employees that were like looking for work cause you know, we were closed. And I reached out to them and said, hey, I'll you know, give you guys an hour if you come in and help out. And that was huge. It was awesome. And it was great having people that were you know, investing in the business with the work that they were doing and the look around. I was talking to one of my employees the other day who kind of pointed at a, a wall that we painted and was like, every so often, just look at that and realize that I did that and it's it's a part of this now and it was it was very cool to be able to bring employees in not just from you know not just as laborers but as contributors to the space 
and that was that was great. Yeah, I mean, they they get to feel more involved and like really feel a part of the business as opposed to just being somebody that's employed that works there. Like getting to actually do the work and see the completion. I mean, I I'm the same way. I love to like tear stuff up and then put it back together or like clean an area and be like, look that like that looks so much better than it did. Like you get that reward and they can look at it every day. Um, yeah, I, the new space is awesome. And actually hearing that it, it was a dance club before makes so much sense because like you walk in and there's like that big platform with like a down ramp and the, it it just clarifies the space to me so much as to like what was done there originally yeah um, we did keep the one stage at the front of the building like they had one massive stage that we were just like what if we just line it with games you know and at the last place everything was just set up in rows it was it was just six rows of arcade games in three you know, columns essentially. And now like the games kind of curve with the walls and stuff like that. And it makes for a lot more dynamic space, which was something that we were worried about, you know, at the last spot, we found that people really like setting up in like their own space. You'll get a group of four or six or eight people who want to take over one section at a time. And if they don't have those sections, then they kind of feel lost. And right. so now, now we've got set up, we've got like the top of the stage, we've got the games behind, uh, like there's these little uh, mock walls that are in the space. It's like, you got the games back there that you can do. You can take over the board game space. You can take over the pinball room or the arcades that are set up in little clusters over here. Ski ball is tucked into its own little section. Yep. And now, you know, when yeah, you're like in pins there. And, pins in the back corner. and Yeah. And we got to upgrade uh once halloween comes in in a few weeks uh we'll be at 21 pinball machines which i i was told that that makes us the biggest pinball bar in wisconsin so that's pretty cool yeah Yeah, i i I really like the way that it's set up like like you were talking about it's more dynamic space and there's a lot of flow i mean you can you can walk in and you basically have like four routes like which which way do you want to go to start Mm -hmm. and then you hit the bar and then it's like okay now you have five more directions that you can go like where are you going to go now <laughs> choose your own adventure yeah exactly and there's there's so much more flow to it it makes the space feel huge too like it really does you get in there and it makes it feel really big um i guess <laughs> what we, really makes what really makes the space feel big is when you're down the basement getting tools and then you go up the stairs through the manager's <laughs> office back through the whole space up to the front and you get up on a ladder and you go oh shit i forgot <laughs> and then you have to go all the way back I've done so many times. <laughs> you have to take another trip. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we've we've touched on the space, the the renovation, everything you guys moved around. Let's talk about the games. So you guys sure. have some new games in there. I know because I brought one. Um, mm-hmm. But you guys also have a handful of games that I don't remember at the first location. You were able to expand your, your old library, um, your classic games, as well as your new indies. So let's talk about that. Kind of walk us through. Um, I know I did, I did a couple of videos on TikTok of like walking through your whole arcade so you, people mm-hmm. can see, but just... Take us through kind of a a tour and let us know where everything is. Well, the big exciting new thing we got is Galactic Battlegrounds made by some, or Galactic Battleground made by some very uh, cool indie developers that we know. Um, Appreciate the compliment. Yeah. uh, Basically, like, again, our budget was pretty limited as far as the move went. So I didn't get to buy a whole lot of new games. But at the last location, you know, it's always good to swap out things that are performing as well and things like that. So I had like a little stash of games that I was, you know, ready to start bringing in and rotating. Um, And as soon as we made the move and we had a bigger space, it was like, well, now we can just put all this stuff in place. Um, So I think we, I, I think we brought in like seven or eight new arcade games and then nine new pinball machines was what it was. And we also, for the first time, have Ski Ball. We have four Ski Ball lanes, uh, which has been a huge hit. It's great. Um, but yeah, I think we brought in like Soul Calibur 2. We brought in Galactic Battleground. We brought in Ring King. We brought in um, just like a handful, mostly like uh, some new classics, uh, Sinistar, um, things like that. So. 
Yeah, I mean, you guys had a whole bunch of games. Um, let's talk about the Indies specifically, because I know you have, you've got us, Galactic Battleground, um, you've got Killer Queen, you've got Death Ball. Am I, yeah. I'm not, those are the three that you guys have? We've got Death Ball, and then we have one called Block It Blast that is right, made by right. some developers in Madison. Um, uh, Dad's Arcades makes, uh, it's kind of like a Pong Arkanoid combination. It's a competitive game where you're you're trying to make a ball into a goal, but there's a lot of obstacles in the way. And as you break those apart, you get power ups that um, you know help you out in achieving that and getting better offense and defense, which is a lot of fun. Um, I think right now we're the only one, but it sounds like they're working on getting like a, a proper cabinet made that they'll be able to. You know, you'll you'll probably see a couple more popping up around the state pretty soon. Yeah, I'd I'd definitely like to talk to them to kind of get their their story. I I find it so fascinating. I mean, I found a new guy here in Minneapolis that just made a game, and it just came out of nowhere. He just reached out to me like he had like two followers on Instagram. He's like, "Yo, I just made this game uh, because I found your podcast, and now it's in Minneapolis. Like, come check it out. I want to play." I was like, nice. "Okay, like that's that's so cool to hear that like there's still people doing it." So um, I guess yeah. just... oh, we should be we should be getting uh, Killer Queen is making zombies now yes. and we should be getting that whenever whenever it ships. I didn't yeah. even know they were making a cabinet for that. But just just <laughs> yeah. run me run me through all the indie games you have and kind of like how like what it's like to have indie games in your bar. Like what are the pros and cons to having indie games? So we have Killer Queen, which is the big one. Uh, Death Ball. Block of Blast, Galactic Battleground, um, and I feel like I'm missing one. But um, and indie games pretty much never break, which is my favorite thing. They're made with actual modern components, um, and it's it's just great that you know they're going to work 100 percent of the time. People seem to really respond well to indie games. Because I think there's kind of this mix of looking at it and feeling comfortable that it's like an LCD screen and kind of a slimmer profile and it looks more modern. So it looks, you know, younger audiences are probably a little more used to that, a little more comfortable with it. And also it's made with like actual modern game design sensibilities. Like it takes it takes a while to figure out how to be good at like Sinistar, which is a great game and I love it, but like it, it's hard to pick up for someone that doesn't play a lot of arcade games. But if you walk up to Death Ball, you'll figure it out in like a game or two, you know? And if if not, you've got like the community building aspect that all these games strive for now, like Killer Queen or Galactic Battleground, where you'll have people saying like, oh, we should play, I'll show you how it works. And I, I think it's something that um, modern developers are are really working to make sure, I don't want to say like make their game go viral, but in a way to just make sure that the games are more comfortable to play and easier to pick up um, because that's such a huge barrier for a lot of great old arcade games is just that if the first time you play it, you walk away not knowing anything about what you just did, the chances of you picking it back up are very low. And so you're always going to have instruction screens. You're always going to have, you know, the tips and tricks and hints and the community around it um, that really make indie games shine now, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think I think those are really good points. I mean, the, the whole ability to, like, easy to pick up but hard to master. Like, you look at some of the old mm -hmm. games, like Sinistar is a great example. Um, there are so many awesome classic games but they're so damn hard like mm -hmm. you you have to play for hours just to get comfortable with the controls sometimes and, and it's i mean that's kind of that was the only way they knew how to do replay value at the time especially it's so hard people just want to get a little 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 bit better every time yeah it's like like battle totes i think is the prime example of that where you know if you bought a battle totes game for sega genesis or whatever once you beat it, you probably weren't going to pick it back up right. again. So in order to get the value out of it, they had to make it really hard to beat. And that's the classic, classic arcade conundrum, I think. 
Yeah. And I mean, the community aspect is huge too. Like Killer Queen, we all know how big the Killer Queen community is and mm -hmm. they run national tournaments. You've run tournaments at your locations. Yep. Um, and that's, that's so big that you have these people, like, especially when I went to uh, Bumble Bash, I wasn't very good at Killer Queen. I had just played a little bit and I got there and some of the best players, like I was playing with some of the people that, that ended up winning from New York. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, just you're, you're doing this a little weird. Like, stay over on this side or be more focused on one objective. Don't try and do all three. It's like just little tips like that helps so much. And it really does build with the community. Um, so I guess what are future plans for IO? Obviously you've done so much recently, but what are your plans for the next couple of years here? Well, I hope to take a nap at some point. Um, but I think right now we're uh, just with everything opening back up, it's been awesome being in Madison where like our vaccination rate is crazy high. And I think it was the first of June where uh, Dane County Public Health was just like, should be good to go. You know, mass off full capacity. Let's give it a shot. And it's worked out pretty darn well so far. And we're still kind of getting used to it. It's, you know, it, it's weird because it feels like we've been here a long time because you know, I've been in that space since December, but we've only been open since May 20th. And so we're, we're still getting a little comfortable with it, doing the quality of life changes, uh, making sure that things are organized for our staff, making sure all of that's going on. After that, it's going to be um, making sure that the games stay fresh, uh, whether that's rotating or just like, making small changes or mods or whatever, or just going through and making sure games are clean and working. Because I think a lot of people, uh, sometimes you'll play a game that doesn't work right, quite right. It's like close, but it's really hard until it's like, oh, that joystick was actually really bad. Here's a new one. And you go, oh, now I, now this makes sense. Now I have to play it again. Um, so with that, as far as the space, we're pretty comfortable with it, but, uh, oh yeah, City of Madison is bringing back a lot of events. We have Willie Street Fair coming up, which is like the big block party that is directly in front of our bar that's in the middle of September. And that's going to be our first big challenge of like, uh, how can we handle having a space this big? Um, and then we'll be going into fall and winter, which are our typical big busy months you know it's starting to get cold out again people want to go out but they don't want to go bar hopping and so they want to go somewhere they can stay for a couple hours and that's where we really shine i think yeah i mean those those sound like good plans it's it is really going to be a a test of the space the games especially the older games um and the staff just like can you keep up with that many people because there just have, hasn't been a ton of traffic just in mm -hmm. general um I guess we've we've talked about everything here. I, I want to one more time kind of go into your video game history and talk about like your favorite games you've ever played. Um, so just kind of run me run me back through real quick before we wrap everything up. Um, where you got started on video games and what are some of your like favorite memories and favorite games from your gaming past? Sure. I started on Sega Genesis. I had Sonic the Hedgehog and um, Oh God, there's a game called Biohazard that I played with my brother all the time that we loved. It was kind of like a side scroll and shooter. That was great. Um, super weird art style, great music. I uh, grew up, played a lot of Command and Conquer with my dad. Um, got into the RTS thing, Starcraft a little bit. Warcraft three was really where I, I went, Oh my God, you know, video games rule. I uh, did like the custom map maker and stuff like that and started getting into, you know, baby's first game dev stuff. Um, Might Magic 6 is the mandate of heaven is probably my favorite video game of all time. It's just an old school 3DO RPG um, that I just love and I still play through it about once a year. Um, after that, I think Halo 2 was was probably the big obsession for a long time. Got into Dota, got into Heroes of New Earth, and now play just a whole, whole, whole lot of Dota 2. And that's that's my 
my keepsake. I got this at MLG Columbus. It's a poster of all the heroes in Dota that were out at the time and it's signed by a bunch of the pros. So that's, if that, you know, counts and makes me a, a real Dota player or not. But that's kind of where I'm at right now. Arcades were, they weren't actually a huge part of my childhood. I have some very fond memories of arcades and playing like uh, Simpsons, uh, playing a lot of uh, Galaga, a lot of NFL Blitz, a lot of NBA Jam, um, especially because my brother was more of an athlete and those were the games that he always wanted to play. So if we went to an arcade together, it was like, we are playing Blitz, Jam, Open Ice. Um, which are all fantastic games. Yeah, which are still great. And uh, I would love to get an Open Ice for the bar at some point. <laughs> I'm keeping an eye out. But yeah, I think that's that's an overview yeah i mean i think i think that's that's some good stuff i mean dota dota is one i never really got into when i saw that poster when i when you first came on camera i thought it was league and then i remembered you didn't play league um but yeah how dare you right very very similar but i think i think dota is kind of regarded as a better game i'm not gonna i mean i'm not gonna pick because i didn't play one of one of them but um (laughs) yeah i guess i guess just to wrap everything up this was just give us uh links so let us know where people can find you on social media and obviously like where the bar is how can they come and play io arcade bar is at 924 williamson street in madison wisconsin uh we are madison's place for drinkers with a gaming problem you can find us on facebook and instagram at io arcade bar all one word or you can find our website at io arcade dot bar um come on by bring your quarters Grab a grab a beer and let's play some games. Awesome. Well, I just want to say thanks for coming on here, man, and chatting about IO. Uh, it's good to finally have you on here and talk again since the last time. Um, and to anybody that's checking out the stream or the video, um, if you like what we're doing here, here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It means the world to us. Uh, it really helps us grow. We've got some more stuff coming. We just got stickers. We've got pins. So merches in the works here. Um, And we'll be back again next week. So until then, peace. Thank you, folks.